In this video, we're going to show you how to remove and replace rear brakes on a Ford Explorer. 19 millimeter, we're going to remove the tire. So I'm going to take the bleeder screw cover off right here, the dust cover. And then I'm going to open that bleeder screw. I'm just going to break it open. Make sure that it's loose enough so once the caliper is dismounted, once the caliper is dismounted, I can open it freely. So now we're going to take the caliper off the bracket to bolts with a 13 millimeter wrench or socket. I'm going to break them first with my wrench. Then I'm going to use an electric gun to spin them off freely. Now let's just wiggle it off. And there we go. I'm going to set that aside so I can take these bracket off. I'm going to remove the pads first. They're kind of frozen in there. That could be the brake condition. So whenever you run into pads that are stuck like this, that aren't sliding freely in the bracket, that's going to stay right where it is and never release from that actual rotor. Now I'm going to remove the caliper bracket from the knuckle. And the two mounting bolts are a 15 millimeter socket or wrench. I take that all the way out, definitely take the other bolt and loosen it up. And then remove the bracket with the pads. So now we're going to remove the mounting screw for this rotor to the hub. And it is a T40, which is a Torx Fit 40. Some people call it a star socket. I want to explain something real quick. I've seen in the past, people have written and said, don't ever use an air tool for a Torx Fit. Well, I'm here to tell you as a professional, that is wrong. Because they break when you do, do it by hand. And the parts trucks actually won't warranty it sometimes. They ask you right out, do you use a hand wrench or an air pack tool? And if you say air or electric, they'll warranty it. Um, so that is just a little tidbit for you. I'm just going to give this a quick little spray, try to loosen up some of the rust that's prohibiting it from falling off. I'm going to put a lug nut back on, just a little bit of hand tighten so that when I hit it with a hammer, it won't come flying off, Something like that. So now with the lug nut on there, I'm just going to give it a good whack. Now we can take that lug nut off the rest of the way. And you can see the rotor just falls off. So now I'm going to take my 11 millimeter wrench and I'm going to break that bleeder screw free, which is as easy to do because I already loosened it up once it was mounted. And we want that fluid to start popping out. I got a bucket underneath and I'm going to get a tool and I'm going to make sure this caliper is good. So I'm going to use the brake caliper tool this particular piece is going to have the two notches. They're going to go into that piston. As you can see, it has two notches. So you're going to line that plate up. Line those notches up. Then you're going to expand this tool so it brings the plate back, seats those two notches in the piston. Meanwhile, like I said, I have a catch bucket for the Brake fluid, the idea is for this to bottom out. I'm going to get a socket. I'm 
Then you're gonna need a wrench if you have this tool to hold this steady while you turn this. So now you take that tool and you just keep spinning it in. And the actual piston is spring-loaded. So if you can see that, it turns and it will bottom out right when it's done. So now we can reverse this and take the tool out. So you're gonna break that free. you can see that the pistons all the way in. And that fluid is because I had the bleeder screw open. And I do that because I don't like any back pressure going into an ABS system ever. Now I'm going to clean up this hub. You want to clean any rust from it, any corrosion, and I'm just going to use a sandpaper pad on a whizzer wheel like and just a light air pressure. See how the silver's coming through? I'm just getting rid of the surface rust. I'm not grinding the metal away. See all the surface built up there? I'm gonna get rid of that too. Now if you don't have a compressor, you're gonna use a brass brush or a metal wire brush and really get in close to where that hub sits. If there is rust build up there, the rotor won't sit even and you can end up with a pulsation. And that's the point of all of this. We don't want any bad brake system. We don't want any confusion or worn out parts, pre-worn out. Make sure you get rid of all that. All right, now I take some copper, never sees because it's high temp. You can brush on the silver stuff or brush on the gold. I recommend the gold all the time because the gold is higher temp. So when this roadie gets really hot, it won't break down. And you really just wanna focus on the center of the part of that hub, and that's good. So now that our hub's all cleaned up, I can take our rotor and I'm just going to line up that mounting hole right there with the hole on the hub. Then I'm going to get my Torx bit. Start it by hand. I want to make sure it's seated all the way around. Now that we have the rotor mounted, we can clean it with our brake clean, get the surface oils off of there from the storage. Do it to both sides. You can do it before you mount this or do it after. So now we have the caliper bracket with the old pads in it and we're gonna dismount these and clean this caliper bracket up. So as you can tell, this was the inner pad because you can see where the piston sat and that was the only one that was moving. Then you have this one. This one was, it's frozen in there. I have to really hit that to get that out. What ends up happening is rust builds up here. As you can see the corrosion and rust build up. And then it doesn't slide on the sliders. And these get all corroded and they stop it. Some people put a silicone or a caliper grease on the side. I never do because the road dirt will stick to it and that's what's gonna happen. That pad doesn't get the freeness to flow in and out and it gets stuck and frozen and it will wear unevenly and it also causes, can cause a brake shutter or a vibration. So I'm just gonna pop each tin off because the brake pads come with new tins. They call this caliper hardware, tins, there's one. Those are really in there. Now this is the first brake job on this car. Take all four of them off. 
Perfect. We're also going to clean up the sliders, but first I'm going to take a brush and get rid of all this rust. If you have a wire wheel, I suggest trying that also. So now that the surface here is cleaned, I'm going to move on to the caliper sliders and I'm just going to pinch this boot. Obviously inspect the boots, make sure there's no tears, not even a pinhole, because that'll get rust in there and that pin will seize up on you. So let's spin that out. Note, do one at a time because sometimes you have calipers with a rubber boot. It has to go back in the same place. It cannot go either. If it's on the top, it can't go down below. I'm going to clean this off, just clean all that off. That's a really nice caliper bolt, nice and clean and shiny. And then I'm going to add new I use silicone paste. I'm just going to add a coating to it. And then I'm going to put some inside this boot because then it stays in there and it lubes up as it slides in and out, pulls that grease, silicone grease right in there. You can use caliper grease. Believe it or not, silicone paste has got a higher temp to it. So I spin and put it back in and it gets all the air out. I'll squeeze that boot. Make sure all the air is out. Get rid of that extra silicone and I'm going to put it right on the boot because I want those boots to stay nice, not dry out. Keeps that flexibility to that boot. Perfect. Now we're going to do the same to the other side. Perfect. Now let's take our shims that we got. And you're going to make sure that the outside has this little indicator on it and the long tab. So the high rise part of it is going to go to the bracket side, not the open side. Once again, take a little bit of the silicone or caliper grease and just coat. I like to make sure I get down in those edges because that's where the water will sit and cause rust buildup. And if rust builds up underneath the tins, it'll push them upward and freeze the pads in place. So that is the proper way to do that. Line that right up and snap it down. Push it right down in there. Do it again on this side. Find the correct one. They give you enough for both sides. Flip it around, do the same to this side. There you go. Now we can take our brand new pads. Now I'm going to mount them in there and make sure that they slide good. Another way of doing it is I sometimes I can put them in sideways like this and then bring them up and pop them in. Don't forget each time you're doing this too with the new hardware, you're seating that hardware in further, which is perfect. Set it up. Perfect. Look at that. There we go. Now we can mount that on the car. Here we have the caliper bracket bolts to knuckle. And you can see a little blue tinge in there that is like a thread Loctite. So I'm going to clean the old bolts on a wire wheel, then apply new coat of blue, which is medium strength Loctite, and then torque them down. So now we have our cleaned bolts. I'm going to put a little tab of medium strength Loctite on that. And then now they're ready to go, set them aside and grab that caliper bracket. Okay, let's take our caliper bracket, line it right up. I'm going to put the top bolt in first. Start it by hand. Put the bottom one in.
I'm gonna get my electric ratchet, squeeze these pads in so they bottom out. Get my electric ratchet with that 50 millimeter socket. I'm gonna snug these up. So we have the caliper bracket, and this is called caliper bracket to knuckle mounting bolts, 76 foot pounds. Double check the top. Okay, so now I'm going to take my caliper itself and mount it on the caliper bracket. Push those sliders in. And these, so these bolts are 13 millimeter socket or wrench. Start them by hand. It's only 24 foot pounds, so don't over torque them. torque wrench, set it to 24 foot-pounds, caliper to caliper bracket. All right, last thing we're going to do here is we're going to open that bleeder screw with that 11 millimeter wrench, and I'm going to let it gravity bleed. keep an eye on that and make sure no air bubbles come out. They actually shouldn't because I never pushed that piston back and pulled it back out and back and forth. I just pushed it back. I'll let that drip for about a minute to two minutes. No air bubbles. It should be perfect. So now two minutes or so has gone by. Not one air bubble. So I'm going to snug it up. Take some brake clean and I'm going to clean that area and put that boot back on. We don't want any dirt getting inside that. Just clean it so that way after you road test it, if you feel like your pedal's moving, you can notice on each caliper they've been cleaned and dried. So therefore you know if it is leaking, which one is leaking. Now we're gonna remount our tire. Start each lug by hand. Grab my socket and remember to do it in a star pattern. Let's snug them down. You'll feel that rim seating itself. Now we'll get the torque wrench and torque it up. The wheel torque is a hundred foot pounds. And you're still going to do it in a star pattern. Always double check. So now that you're done with your brake job, you've pumped up your brakes, you can open the hood, go to the master cylinder, which is located in front of the driver's seat, take that cover off, confirm what it takes for fluid. This takes only dot four. 
So we have some dot four brake fluid here. And we're just gonna top off our master. You'll see right where that line is. Don't go above it. That is, the line is on the side. You'll see it's a max and min. Sometimes I like to just shake it and it confirms where the fluid is because it's kind of hard to see. Top it off just a smidge more and then we're good to go. Make sure there's no dust or grease falling in there. And that the seal cover is good and then lock it. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.